Gotta be the light, light, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta be the light that shines on the dark day, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the first ever virtual ASU GSV Award Show, presented by Arizona State University and GSV, featuring the Innovator of Color Awards, powered by Russell Reynolds and Associates and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Innovative Educator Award, powered by Leap Innovations, the GSV Cup, Powered by Google Cloud, Holon IQ, Brand Capital International, and GSV Ventures. Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Dr. Mahalia Ann Hines. Live from Arizona State University, your hosts, Julia Rosen and Jamie Kassip. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are, a big welcome to the ASU GSV Summit Awards Show. I'm Julia Rosen, Managing Director of Global Academic Partnerships at Arizona State University. And I'm Jamie Kassop, the former Chief Education Evangelist at Google, currently hanging out up in Sedona, writing a book, so you should come visit. Absolutely. So the ASU GSV Summit has been going on for 11 years, um, eight of which we've had this award show. And this year has been a very unusual year, but something that has allowed us to expand the audience access. We have more than 30,000 people registered over the course of these five days to change the world from 133 countries. Yeah, we're living in interesting times, Julia. We are at the dawn of the digital revolution, right? The digitalization train was going very steadily up a little bit at a time, and now all of a sudden, because of what we're going through, it's just booming. And at the same time, digital learning is also growing. And we are at a point now where we need to make sure that we're doing digitalized learning the correct way, and that everyone who's involved is really putting their heart, their passion, their dedication into making sure that we build the best digital tools that we can to serve all the students in the world. And I'm really excited by this. Um, me too, Jamie. And it's so cool because we're able to highlight some of the people that are doing it at an incredibly high level that are exemplifying that vision. So Jamie, should we get started? Yeah, let's get started. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you the sponsors of the Innovative, Innovator of Color Award. Oh, I'm sorry, Jamie. Um, Aren't you a former winner of the Innovator of Color Award? Yeah, yeah, we don't talk about that. Oh, don't you have some crown that you pass on to the next person? I know, you think I would have like something I can I give know. to someone. We'll no. have to. Uh, anyway, so it's my pleasure to introduce Meredith Rosenberg of Russell Reynolds and Associates and my man, Henry Hips from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Hello, I'm Meredith Rosenberg. I lead the global digital education and edtech practice at Russell Reynolds Associates. We're here to present the Innovator of Color Awards. Russell Reynolds is proud to sponsor these awards for the fourth year in a row. This award honors executives who are leading innovators in their communities and foster meaningful change. The need for this change is even more apparent this year as the world faces crises in social justice, health, climate, and economic areas. Our first 2020 Innovator of Color Award winner is Nate Davis, Chairman and CEO of K-12 Incorporated. Nate joined the K-12 Board of Directors in 2009. He was named Chairman of the Board in 2012 and became the CEO in 2018. I have worked with Nate over the past few years in this capacity. Nate's parents were teachers. He learned to give back. He learned what he could do from an early age to change the future. Nate sought to be involved in things that could impact the future of the country. He saw technology as a disruptor for what was possible. In his early career in the communications industry, Nate learned about disruption and competing against the monopolies, competing against the status quo. He figured out how to do things differently. In education and through K-12, Nate's actions have transformed learning for more than 1 million students. Please join me in congratulating Nate Davis, CEO of K-12 with the Innovator of Color Award. Hello everyone. I'm so humbled that Deborah Quazo and Michael Moe created this award and that the selection committee 
It seemed fit to give me this honor. I wish we could do this in person. It's a tough time for all of us, but I really do want to thank you for this. I want to thank Meredith Rosenberg for the introduction and Henry Hips for, for the contribution as well. I should start off by congratulating Carlos Moreno, Big Picture Learning. He's done so much for creating alternative schools, and I'm not sure I'm even in his league. <laughs> this is a bit overwhelming, to be honest. When the first notes came in, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a solicitation because I just couldn't believe it. Who would have believed that I could achieve an award like Jesse Willie Wilson, Kai Henderson, and others? Um, rare air that I'm living in right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you also to my team at K-12. The many people around me who inspire me every day to stay focused and never give up on a dream of educational equality for all groups. You know, my mom was a teacher for her entire career. My dad was a teacher after he retired from the military. They were products of broken homes, poverty, and racism in the Deep South when they grew up. They both attended Tuskegee University on a scholarship, and it was the education they received that allowed them to escape poverty. They knew that education was the ticket to a better life, and they also believed that if they made every sacrifice for me and my sisters, we would have the same life that they've had. You see, my father wanted me to have a great education in the best institutions rather than let the military transfer me around and him around from one school to another and disrupt my education. So what he did is he volunteered to go back to Vietnam a second time and he achieved the Purple Heart that second time. Because in those days, if you volunteered to go to a war zone, it allowed your family to stay in one place until you came back. That allowed me to stay in one high school, have stability in my educational career, and move on. Talk about dedication to your family and dedication to a child's education. That's the epitome. And with that as a backdrop, how could I not learn that everything I am is because of the quality of the education and the focus on education that my parents had that run so deep in our family? We live in a world where not enough people, however, especially people of color, have educational equality and equal opportunities. We cannot live in a society where it's acceptable for one in every four black citizens, one in every four Native American citizens, and one in every five Hispanic citizens live in poverty and do not have the education to work in the higher paying jobs. And by the way, all that, while one in less than 10 white people live in the same situation. That's not only because the gap is here, but that gap is gonna cause us to struggle and it's gonna widen. And it just, it's morally corrupt to live in a society where this happens because it's gonna lead to civil unrest and revolt. The key to changing this picture is to provide educational quality and personalized education for everyone. I applaud everyone who's a member of the ASU GSP family and their constant focus on innovation and education and the tools that will make it equally available to everyone. But there's so much more we can do. As far as we've come, we have a long way still to go. That's why we at K-12 introduced a program called We Stand Together. Its key components are around what's going on in our country today, another $10 million in scholarships to middle and high school students, an expanded legal and law enforcement pathway in our Destinations Career Academies that allows law enforcement agencies to work together with students and get to develop a better relationship. It allows a new interactive K-12 course designed with the idea that there should be an exchange, an exchange of designs and exchange of ideas about the effects, the activism and the causes of systematic racism. And it's designed by external people not K-12 personnel that we want to work with in the field. And then we want to make that course available to all schools in the nation to help kids understand the value of, of acceptance and the values of, of inclusion. And finally, a national forum that we're going to sponsor at K-12 held later this year to examine the ways to accelerate the availability of high quality educational options for underrepresented students. It's going to take all of us to get past the debates of funding and policy and, and accountability and arguments around school choice 
to move to a collaborative effort to achieve a better educational model. We must take the best of brick and mortar, the best of the public school system, give it distance learning, personalization, and flexibility, throw in some artificial intelligence and virtual reality, augmented reality, apply that to develop adaptive learning, and hand all of those great tools to our great teachers and allow them to have the greatest amount of ability to meet the demands of all students. We need government to encourage innovation and reward innovation and fund innovation. We need businesses to help schools understand what's important for the competitive jobs that they have, that they need, that they can't get filled. And we need telecom companies to get off the sidelines. They need to make sure every community has broadband access at affordable rates. And we need a public and private partnership to build these models to allow education to survive. We cannot continue to fight with each other. Think of a model where a child can learn at home when they're sick or when they're traveling with their parents or when there's a storm. And then when they go into the classroom, they're using the exact same curriculum. And the teacher can modify the curriculum, take out content and add content to personalize it for every child's learning and every method of learning. And for that child to stay in the same curriculum, no matter where they are, use one login for all of those tools that all of us offer in being engaged using collaboration tools like the ones they're going to use when they go to work. And then in society, let's pay the teacher what they deserve for educating the most precious thing in all of our lives, our children. Imagine a world where we can do these things. I still believe that's possible. We all need to work on it together. And together we're going to create the kind of innovation that education can be in this country. Thank you for honoring me today. I'm humbled by this award, but I will not let my ego get in the way of realizing that we have so much more to do. I vow to do my part, and I know you'll do yours. Thank you. I appreciate it. Everybody have a great day. Congratulations, Nate, and hello, ASU GSV community. It's great to be with you again. I'm Henry Hips, Deputy Director at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I'm truly excited about the agenda for this year's virtual summit. I'm particularly hopeful that the conversations, the panel discussions, the speakers will result in the type of energy that we need to find solutions for the persistent opportunity gap for underserved students in our education sector. That's precisely the reason the Gates Foundation has been a longtime supporter of the summit. And in thinking about the context for today, for the moment, thinking about the coronavirus pandemic, as well as the ongoing conversations and tensions regarding racial equity and justice in our country, acknowledging that those issues are deeply and disproportionately impacting students and communities of color, it means that in this moment, representation at the leadership level in our sector is that much more critical. And it's a recognition that leaders need that level of context and also be able to operate at the powerful intersection of both a focus on equity as well as a focus on innovation. And so it's with great pleasure and an honor that I get an opportunity to present the second 2020 Innovator of Color Award to Carlos Moreno, co-executive director of Big Picture Learning, who has been operating at exactly that intersection of equity and innovation. After a successful career in the corporate and international nonprofit sectors, Carlos began his work as an educational trailblazer, first as a teacher in 2002. Nearly two decades later, he has been teacher, principal, director, and CEO, but through it all, he has been and continues to be an observer and a learner. As the co-executive director for Big Picture Learning, a nonprofit organization that seeks to radically change schooling and education by putting students directly at the center of their own learning, his leadership has been integral to the organization's groundbreaking success nationwide. In fact, today there are more than 65 schools across the country, as well as internationally, in Australia, the Netherlands, Italy, and Canada, utilizing the big picture learning design. Among his many accomplishments, Carlos Moreno is recognized as a let's get it done leader and a tenacious voice for expanding opportunities for all youth, for his commitment in designing highly engaging schools and environments for youth, I am honored to present the 2020 Innovator of Color Award to Carlos Moreno. 
Congratulations and thank you for your leadership. Hi, this is Carlos Marino, co-executive director of Big Picture Learning. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you, Henry. And thank you to Deborah Quazo and the entire ASU GSV Summit team for this recognition. It's truly an honor to receive this award. And it's moments like these that remind me of how blessed and fortunate I have been and continue to be to work and learn alongside some amazing all around human beings. People committed to students from all backgrounds and walks of life, but especially committed to those who have historically and continue to be kept furthest from opportunity in this world. Specifically, students living in poverty and our students of color our multilingual students, differently abled youth, and the millions of young people who are holding and living with unaddressed trauma. I know that regardless of where we all live and work, everyone that is hearing this message and is tuned into this broadcast knows a young person that identifies within one of these categories. And more than likely, most fall within some intersection of these groups. So in solidarity, I remind us all in the words of the great beloved agitator, Muhammad Ali, service to others is the rent we pay for our room here on earth. And I'd be remiss if I did not acknowledge my big picture learning family, my national office colleagues and the hundreds of school leaders and staff across the world, from the US to Kenya, from Canada to India, and a number of countries across five continents for their vision and work to improve educational options. It is absolutely their courage to consistently challenge archaic systems, their continued relentless commitment to young people, their beloved communities, and our collective mission grounded in student-centered real-world learning that continues to be my inspiration. Please know that I accept this award not as a celebration of one person's individual success, but as a recognition of how hard my colleagues and I work to continuously improve our craft and share our learning broadly with the hopes of having a positive lifelong impact for all students across the world. If there is anything the last six months should have taught us all is that every day is a gift and we must always live our lives courageously fighting for what we believe in. And this young boy from the Bronx will continue to be committed to doing so until the wheels fall off. Thank you all again. It's my pleasure to introduce Phyllis Lockett, CEO of Leap Innovations. Not only has Phyllis been a great friend for many years, as CEO of Leap Innovations, Phyllis has been a true beacon in the education innovation community. She will then go ahead and present the winner of the Innovative Educator Award. Phyllis. Hello, my name is Phyllis Lockett, founder and CEO of Leap Innovations. I'm thrilled to present the winner of the first ever ASU GSV Innovative Educator Award, powered by Leap Innovations. The idea for Leap Innovations grew as a result of my attending the ASU GSV conference eight years ago. This award is our way to pay it forward and recognize the innovative thinking and work that comes from our K-12 educators who are on the front lines for our kids every day. Amid COVID-19, there are headwinds galore, but my firm belief is that this is an exciting pivot point. We have the chance to emerge ever stronger by innovating through this moment of challenge. Each of our 15 finalists showed incredible depth and inventive thinking, underscoring how powerful our educators are to bring groundbreaking ideas to the fore. Our ask of the entrants to share their best innovations that foster meaningful change, in addition to the power of the idea to solve a clear problem, we rated each entry for the relevance in our pandemic-inspired reality. I am so pleased to announce our winner, Amelia Lopez and her team at the Lindsay Unified School District, which serves majority Latinx kids in rural California. Their innovation is called Empower. Their team, led by Amelia, built a platform from scratch 
to connect real-time learner data and insight with educators, and then to connect each educator's professional learning pathways with what students need. For over a decade, Lindsay Unified has been on a journey to build a learner-centered model around a results-driven culture that centers on learner data and feedback. Much of this has been done through a custom-built learning management system known as Empower. It empowers Lindsay learners to set goals, see their learning data, engage in curriculum, and track their pace and progress through standards and learning targets. This data from Empower has been critical in helping Lindsay support all learners. Student data is such a force in education that in 2018, the education learning analytics market closed out as a $17 billion global industry. This market is a key driver of student performance, but we learned that the same market does not exist for educators. In fact, most educators have very little access to their own data. The data they do have access to comes as a series of disconnected points, offering little or no feedback for improvement. More often than not, it fosters a sense of disappointment and failure. Without such access, how can a teacher know where they need to grow? How can a principal know where and how a teacher needs support and professional learning? Too often, the data about educators exists in silos. Some of it lives in the human resources department, some of it lives at the school site, and some of it simply lives in the minds of the teachers and the leaders themselves. The formative learning principles that we believe for our students, that knowing their data helps them set goals, that seeing their data helps them advance those goals, and that all learning should be connected to their goals, this has been neglected for our educators. Why? We knew there had to be a way to harness the power and the potential of this unmined data, but discovered that no solutions existed. So we created one. To create our solution, we began by looking at our existing learning management system, Empower, the central learning hub for our K-12 learners. We designed a platform that gave educators their own learning and feedback experience, an adult learning portal for them as professional learners. It began with bringing to life their own professional data, once only available in the file cabinets of human resources, their teaching credentials, their years of service, their graduate learning accomplishments. Logging on to Empower Educator Portal for the first time was actually very interesting because it let me see everything that I have in Lindsay. So it let me see how many units I had, how many years I've taught here, which is kind of eye-opening. And it's kind of nice to know where you stand. And it's also nice to know to see the things that you've done and the things that are coming up just to have self-empowerment and self-accomplishment of, hey, I did that. Beyond their professional data, we wanted a way for our educators to set professional practice goals and truly view themselves as learners. We turned to Lindsay Unified's adult learning curriculum. Built in partnership with Summit Public Schools and Transcend Education, the instructional look for are a set of 26 research-based student outcomes that include educator actions and strategies to set the conditions for high quality personalized learning. With the instructional look for us as the core curriculum, we began building the portal as a vehicle for goal setting and professional learning that honored our core belief that all learners learn in different ways and time frames, especially our educators. We built out asynchronous self-paced supports for the competencies, including videos, models, and instructional strategies to ensure all educators had a clear understanding of the adult learning curriculum. We coded an interactive scheduler to allow educators to find, preview, and enroll in innovative professional learning opportunities, including learning academies and micro-credentials aligned to their professional goals. Once enrolled in professional learning opportunities, Empower became their portal to interact with curriculum, engage in collaborative discussions, access feedback and formative assessment, and build a portfolio of practice, including uploading videos of their teaching, reflections, and learner artifacts. They can see and interact with their own longitudinal professional learning data, including district professional learning, certifications they've earned, and even opportunities they're currently enrolled in. Seeing my own learning feels very empowering, excuse the pun. Um, I'm able to reflect on the micro-credentials that I have tackled and been successful with. Um, it also has let me review those that I haven't been as successful with. Um, and similar to my learners, I am able to check and adjust and learn from my mistakes and failures. This asynchronous learning method accomplishes two goals. Our teachers and leaders view themselves as learners and build evidence of learning in the LMS. Additionally, 
They interact with the Empower LMS in the same method our K-12 learners interact with digital curriculum, therefore building their capacity to deliver blended learning. This capacity building proved critical in spring of 2020 during school closure. Our educators, having engaged in the LMS as learners, were able to help learners transition to remote instruction in a way that was built from personal experience. This year, even as Lindsay Unified continues to operate in a distance learning model, we have expanded these innovations, adding in a formative feedback tool for principals to create coaching supports in remote instruction. For the first time, our educator and student data is living in the same space. We are fostering innovation and results-driven culture, not only for our district, but for the field. So what comes next? What if we could build a data infrastructure that allows us to bring all this data together for research and data science? What if we could connect student and educator data in ways that once seemed impossible? What if we could discover correlations between student reading growth and which educators had attended specific professional learning opportunities? Or connect student achievement to years of teaching service? Or instantly measure student gains against teacher and school site attributes and conditions? Partnering with YET Analytics, we began the design of an AWS solution to accomplish three key tasks. Stream all key data systems for both students and educators. Ensure we could trust the data. And create a method for us to connect, correlate, and compare all data. We wanted a truly integrated human capital management system that provided data driving all key decisions for the district. What we are creating serves just that. The AWS solution offers a data lake for the district to pull data in real time from normally disconnected sources and systems. It matches, cleans, and organizes the data so we can query it, analyze it, and visualize it in tools like Tableau. It solves long-standing interoperability issues of student data systems and educator data gaps. It brings together data sources to construct new meaning, new learning, and ultimately new solutions to drive personalized learning, student achievement, and effective educator development. In Lindsay, our vision for our graduates is that they will become lifelong learners, citizens for whom the high school diploma is just the beginning of their education journey. We expect no less of our educators. We believe in and honor them as learners, continually striving to grow and improve. It is our responsibility as a district to provide the support necessary so they can streamline and accelerate that growth. With the Empower Adult Learning Portal and AWS Data Lake, we have truly created an integrated human capital management system that serves our educators as learners. We have brought data transparency and integration to the forefront of a results-driven culture and offer the world an example of how to expand upon our best practices for learner support to drive high-quality, personalized professional learning. <laughs> I am incredibly honored to accept the Leading Educator Innovation Award on behalf of Lindsay Unified. In Lindsay, we believe in being future-focused visionaries, not afraid to take risks to improve learning for our learners. With the experience of over a decade of building a learner-centered system, we know that all of our preschool to 12th grade learners really benefit when learning experiences are designed to meet them at their levels, learnings, and interests. The concept behind our innovation in Empower, our mindset about educator development and the need for a data infrastructure and research and development really comes from how we serve our learners. So this award is for all Lindsay learners and the community of Lindsay. They continue to teach us how to serve and remain learner centered. The innovation is an ongoing joint venture with so many district stakeholders and partners. We would like to thank our board of trustees who provide so much support and encouragement for us to tackle innovation as a district that really serves our learners and our personalized learning model. We would like to thank the Empower Learning Company for their con constant support helping us envision possibilities inside of our learning management system and a results-driven culture. Additionally, we'd like to thank YET Analytics and the Learning Accelerator for their monumental support, deep thinking, and data research work to build the data infrastructure. Additionally, we've been fortunate to have had the support of the Department of Education and a teacher school leader grant and we thank them for their multi-year support in redesigning human capital management system solutions. And finally, so much of this work has been and continues to be supported by conversation, feedback, and the deep thinking and work of Lindsay Learning Facilitators, curriculum and technology staff, and district leaders. 
We are honored to accept this award and continue to be future focused and share what we learn with the field. Thank you. Congratulations to Amelia and the entire team at Lindsay Unified. On behalf of the ASU GSB and Leap Innovations teams, we are proud to present this award and a cash prize for $10,000. In addition to this prize, we are also happy to share $1,000 prizes each to our two runners up, Sarah Young of the Utah State Board of Education and Mark Martin of Build Up. And finally, be sure to check out all of our finalist presentations at the Leading Educator Innovation Showcase. Thank you all for joining. And again, congratulations to the team at Lindsay Unified. Wow, what inspiring stories. Uh, Nate, Carlos, and Amalia, thank you so much for all the work that you do. Should we get a, give them a hand, Jamie? All right. Up. So for the next segment of the program, I want to introduce Fernando Cruz, who leads the EdTech marketing at Google Cloud. And I, I know I've only been gone for a couple months and that organization is constantly growing. So I'm excited to see Fernando and what he has to say. And my good friend, Deborah, who is our, our champion for everything that we have here. And we love her very much to present the GSV Cup candidates. Take it away, guys. Good morning and welcome to the first annual GSV Cup. We are thrilled to have everyone here. Um, for the first time this year, we put out a global call asking for all seed and pre-seed education technology entrepreneurs to submit their applications to compete in the GSV Cup. We received well over 500 applicants into, into this process. We then had a group of esteemed judges from venture capital firms all over the world judge the 500 entries and we had arrived at 200 finalists. Those 200 finalists have been judged over the last few weeks by yet another esteemed panel of world-class VCs and we arrived at three finalists. Today, those three finalists will be competing for the $250,000 prize purse to be awarded um, on the stage live. Uh, and we will, we will be doing live audience voting. So stay tuned. You will be able to judge for your one, two, and three favorites um, to receive their allocation of the $250,000 prize purse. First, let's meet our three finalists. Our first company is Abwab. Welcome to Abwab. We're an online educational platform that's transforming the way students learn across our region. I'm Hamdi. I'm Hussein. And I'm Sabri. And we're the co-founders of Abwab. Our region has 100 million students below the age of 18. Most of them lack access to high quality education. And the result of that, there is an extremely high dependence on after school tutoring and learning centers. And most of this happens in an offline setting. And what we see is that parents end up spending a very large proportion of their family income to deliver these learning experiences for their kids. And this is precisely where Abwab comes in. We've coupled the latest in technology and content production to create concept-based lessons and deliver it to students where they can consume it at their own pace from their own homes. So what we've done is that we've taken the curriculum and we broke it down into learning journeys that guide the students throughout their academic year. And because we're passionate about making the students feel guided through their learning journeys with us, we've created simple tests and quizzes after each lesson to have continuous visibility over their understanding through their journey. In addition to that, and to provide visibility for students and their parents about their performance, we have created simple dashboards and metrics that allows them to evaluate their progress at any point in time. So we all know that no two students learn the same way. That's why our long-term vision is to use the power of AI and machine learning to provide each and every student with their own customized and curated learning experience. We want students to feel that Abwab understands them and has tailored their learning experience based on their needs and their own pace. Our journey began in Jordan, where we were founded in 2019. And then in February 2020, we launched our first product to the market. Shortly after the COVID-19 pandemic broke out, the country went into a full lockdown and schools were shut down. 
The Ministry of Education approached us asking for permission to share our content with students across the nation. The result is that one million students consumed our content throughout the lockdown across the country. Since our launch, we've interviewed over 700 teachers to select a few to deliver our content. We currently cover the grades of 7 to 12 with subjects of math, sciences, and languages. And to create this content, we have our teams of academics, teachers, teacher assistants, animators, and the creative team all working together to make sure that we deliver this engaging content to our students. Our cinematographers, the famous teams behind the cameras, continuously working with our teachers to make sure that they deliver the message in the best way possible. The three of us have worked before in rising technology startups in the region, and we have seen firsthand what technology, scalability, and disruption can do to all industries and sectors. And now is the right time. The stars have aligned, and our lives have all led to this moment, the time where we disrupt education in our region. And in our march towards that, we have just planted our first seed outside of Jordan in the region's largest market, Egypt. The population of 98 million people where we started to generate locally produced content in order to hyper-localize the experience for every student that learns from Abwab. It's been said that internet is the great equalizer. And we at Abwab believe that the greatest manifestation of that will be in education, where we give equal learning opportunities for all. We know that our region is not the most stable. However, we believe that its people have unlimited potential. And to truly unleash the potential of our region, we must equip the upcoming generation with the highest quality education possible. And Abwab is set out to do just that. Our second company is Prepped Medians. Often the question is asked, why aren't Gen Z students engaged? But we at Prep Medians think that's the wrong question. Gen Z is already extremely engaged, yes, with their smartphones. In 2019, Gen Z spent an average of four hours and 15 minutes per day on mobile and over 95% of Gen Z owns a smartphone. During COVID, mobile consumption has only increased. 92% of Gen Z's mobile time is spent on social networks with music and entertainment among the top uses too. So the question should actually be, given this high level of engagement, how do we as educators reach students on the right channel? Our answer, prep medians, the prep comedians. Ah, silly me. Huh? Oh, we are diving into the world of verbs. You'll want to make changes to passages from the test only when you absolutely must. I am genius and that which has no bounds cannot be confined. Billy, have you been linking envelopes again? That was one time. We use social media, pop music, and sketch comedy videos to engage students online so that they can learn on the right channel in order to succeed academically. That's right, we make learning memorable. Think of us as Khan Academy meets TikTok. Indeed, in just the past few months, we've educated and entertained millions of students on TikTok, Instagram, and through our prepmedians.com platform. On TikTok itself, we have over 220,000 followers. We were selected to be part of their first creative learning fund, and we have seven videos with over 500,000 views, with our top video hitting over 6.8 million views. These groundbreaking numbers show that students want to learn the prep medians way. Now, it's no secret that COVID has affected all students, but particularly low-income students of color. That is why we value our over 20 B2B partnerships with nonprofits and public schools to be able to reach students nationwide. These nonprofit customers include iMentor, One Goal, Boys Hope, Girls Hope, Breakthrough, and Minds Matter. And high school customers include Dalton Public Schools, Westmont High School, New Millennium High School, and many more. In the one year since we've launched, we've also built integrations with PowerSchool, Schoology, Canvas, Clever, ClassLink, Blackboard, and more so that we can remain FERPA and COPA compliant and reach millions more students nationwide. Students who are not served by public schools or nonprofits and can afford our services on their own can purchase our program directly on prepmedians.com. Indeed, we have over 3,000 student users. Our students receive an individual learning dashboard where they can track their progress through 20-minute modules that feature question sets, full explanations, and ADA-compliant videos featuring Broadway singer-actors and sketch comedians, as well as myself, a professional actor and an educator with thousands of hours of tutoring experience. 
Teachers receive detailed dashboards with robust resources ranging from student performance data to lesson plans so educators can optimize lesson time. We teach the fundamentals through the highest high school levels of grammar, reading, math, and science. We also teach how to approach college applications, creative writing, and positive psychology, and we'll expand in the future into life skills such as interviewing skills, public speaking skills, and financial literacy. We will become the most widely recognized edutainment brand. The proof that our program works is in the data. Students improve a statistically significant 8% from pre-video to post-video quiz sets of randomized questions after watching a video just once. And the students who've completed the program in its entirety have achieved 95th plus percentile scores on their ACT and SAT sections, even when starting from average scores. Even as COVID makes shooting more content more difficult, we've built remote sets for all of the actors, and our actors are representative of our target student populations, including Black, Hispanic, Asian, South Asian, White, and LGBTQ. So come learn with us, come laugh with us, and come help us build new content so that we can reach students on the right channel and achieve educational equity. Finally, as I say at the end of every episode, believe in yourself, because I certainly do. And our third and final company is Ring Beller. You gotta do it for the children. Oh, give us money for the children. You gotta think about the children. Um, these are smart investors. They're not gonna fall for this kind of thing. Look, folks, we don't want to take up too much of your time. Last year, we launched Ring Beller, interactive video lessons that teach kids urgent 21st century skills like empathy, inclusion, kindness, and collaboration. We do this through what we call a Ted meets Sesame Street format, where me and Unc try to figure out why Earth is so weird by interviewing some of their most extraordinary Earthlings. We sold it to schools and districts all over the country. Teachers loved it. Principals loved it. District administrators had a meeting to come up with a task force to send us an email to tell us that they loved it. Hey, uh, Crumbaker, can I take it from here? I thought I was doing a good job. Yeah, I know, but I'm the founder and you want to get paid for this, right? Wait, what do you mean want to get paid? <laughs> Hey guys, CJ here. Uh, I'm a writer and a media producer. I've spent the past 10 years uh, creating kids content for, for MGM, Sesame Studios, and the United Nations Foundation. Uh, Crumbaker just brought you up to speed, uh, but let me tell you about our present and, and pay close attention because how we invest in this present moment is going to determine the future of our society on a seismic level. Our next step at Ringbiller is, is to create a, a more robust offering, developing a platform that includes additional games, technology tools, and video series all to help this generation navigate these unprecedented times. Specifically, we want to create interactive features that help turn kids from, from digital consumers to socially responsible digital creators so that they quickly become Ringbeller's most effective and inspiring content contributors, developing something we call kid-sourced content. Our business model is pretty simple. One, a subscription-based app for schools and districts. Two, a subscription-based app for parents available on iOS and, and streaming devices like Apple TV and Roku. And by the way, with every subscription purchase, we'll give away a subscription to an under-resourced classroom. And then three, uh, sponsored content in partnership with, with values-aligned brands that, that want to make a difference. Simply put, we are building the authoritative, socially responsible kids app, teaching the next generation urgent skills that are only growing in demand, right? Skills that are, will not only prepare them for the economy they're going to inherit, but also underpin destructive division and inequality in the process. And here's the best part. It's actually gonna be really fun. And do, do it. it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Give us money for the children. Wow, another fantastic group of amazing entrepreneurs. So all of you out there have a really, really tough job ahead of you. You need to vote. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how they're gonna pick through all this. It's just gonna be very difficult to do. But we are giving you two minutes yes. to vote. So you should have your poll up and we need you to think about what you just saw, think about who you wanna vote for and get in there and vote. Absolutely. Vote early and often, right, Jamie? That's what I always say. Yeah. Or, but don't mail in your vote. Just don't do that. <laughs>
<laughs> Seriously, these entrepreneurs are going to be splitting $250,000 of non-dilutive capital and $150,000 of Google Cloud credit. Jamie, is that even a thing? Is that a real thing? Yeah, yeah. They, they take clouds from the sky and they, 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 <laughs> okay. they divide those up and put them in jars. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we know as much uh, the entrepreneurs will appreciate the sure. real Google Cloud credit. Yes, so that's absolutely. wonderful. 15, 15 seconds, seconds, 15 okay, seconds. All right, let's go. Soon. We're gonna do a countdown. No. This is not New Year's <laughs> Eve. All right, get in there, vote. We got a couple seconds left. Come on, vote, 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 vote. 10, 9, 8, 7, 7 6, 6, 5, 4, 3, 3 2, 2, 1. All right. All right. And we are ready to announce who the winners are, right? That's right. Okay. Okay. That's right, Jamie. Let's, Let's do it. it. All right. So, coming in third place, drum roll is Ring Bearer. All right. Okay. Second place is Prep Medium. And the winner is all the way from Jordan Abwa. All right. Congratulations, Congratulations to all of you. Thank you guys, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you everyone, congratulations to all the competitors. Um, you've done an excellent job and have done great presentations. Honestly, uh, we're all beyond humble to be receiving this award. I mean, we've set out to make positive difference in the world. Our core belief is that high quality education is a right and making it affordable and accessible is our mission. Today, this recognition from GSV to be awarded number one globally is a testament to the hard work our entire team has been doing. We're gonna to continue to grind day in and day out to deliver the best learning experience to our students. Thank you, Deborah, Michael, Mushtaba, and the entire GSV team, and all the audience who gave us their vote of confidence. We would love to get to know as many of you as possible, so please do reach out. Thank you, Google Cloud, Holon IQ and Brand Capital for this opportunity. And most importantly, thank you to the Abwab team that have been doing an terrific, a terrific job um, in getting us to this success. We're just warming up, so keep an eye out for more Abwab magic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, to all of the people who competed uh, in the GSV Cup. We're so excited. So um, each of you will be receiving a check and Google Cloud credits. We're very proud of all of your achievements. Yeah, I also want to give my congratulations. Thank you for our participants. Thank you all for voting. To present the final award of the show, please welcome April Montgomery, the Executive Director of KIPP Chicago. April? It is truly an honor to be here today to present the ASU GSB Lifetime Achievement Award to Dr. Mahalia Ann Hines. Dr. Hines has been an educator for over 40 years and impacted the lives of over hundreds and thousands of children. She's been a teacher, a principal, a Chicago school board member, and while technically retired, she's the president of the Common Ground Foundation and a board member at the Obama Foundation. And I think what really inspires me most is her 17 years she spent as a principal. During that time, she helped develop future teachers and artists, community activists and principals. And even in her retirement, she went back to that schoolyard and planted a garden for children to have a space to have peace in nature. To this day, you can still go by and see children sitting next to a patch of sunflowers, cilantro, kale. This garden, like all of her work, is symbolic of her unique ability to help nurture, tend, and grow the seeds of hope and love in every person she mentors and every project she leads. And I know firsthand about that impact because when I was a first year principal, um, one of her former students, Antavis, was 19 in college and Dr. Hines quietly paid for him to be an intern. And then over the years, she still kept developing him. He went on to become one of Kip's best teachers and he won a teacher award for the state of Illinois and she continues to help um, develop him years after she's been his principal. She's also being honored today though for something much deeper and harder to quantify. I've come to believe that the central core of her life's mission is to help us all believe in the highest versions of ourselves and to teach us to live from a place of abundance and transformation. I'd like to talk today about how she's 
made an impact on, on my life. I first met Dr. Hines 15 years ago. We sat on a bench in the warm sun and I told her my life story. And at that time, my life story was very rooted in the shame of poverty. I grew up in Indiana, first in my family to go to college. My mom was 14 when she was pregnant. And sitting on that bench with Dr. Hines that day, I was still shedding the term white trash as a part of my identity. She taught me to see myself as a resilient and strong person and to not be ashamed of, um, and to see those things as a, as a strength. She listened attentively and helped me see my resiliency and scrappiness as a strength and not to hide from it. And over the years, I've called her another mother, a roommate, a friend, a mentor. We've had slumber parties and stayed up until midnight dancing. And then when the unthinkable happened and someone that I loved um, passed away and there was a video of his death that was shared on Twitter that the whole world watched. She held my hand, she cried with me, she had her church pray for me. She then taught me to get back up and to find joy again. After his death, she took me to Selma to march with the people who know far too much about grieving unthinkable violence and still reach for love, justice, and possibility. And this, the work of showing up in immense, during times of immense joy and the deep wells of pain is exactly the heart of Dr. Mahalia Ann Hines. Although she's trained and developed countless mentees, she makes all of us feel singular and special and loved the depth of pain, uncertainty, and yes, deep possibility of this moment in our collective history calls for us all to reimagine our world and create a new way of being. This moment in our history calls for us to find deep love and to live from that place. I can think of no better inspiration than to examine the life of Dr. Mahalia Ann Hines. She practices and embodies radical love and empathy for anyone she meets and calls us all to live from our highest self. I hope you all enjoy this video and find as much inspiration as I have. We love you, Dr. Hines. My grandmother told a story. The first day she took my mother to school, my mother said, I want to be a teacher. She knew what she wanted to do at five years old. Being a teacher, I definitely felt pressure to be a high academic achiever. My mother was like, you don't get to watch The Cosby Show or Different World or Dynasty or Dallas if you're not finished with your homework. So all of that to this day is like fried in my brain. It's still in there that I have to achieve if I want to receive great things. She's a wonderful mother to Rashid. He is now Common, and everybody loves Common. She tells him one of his albums is gonna get a Grammy. A freak, freak. Or an Oscar. <laughs> Glory, Selma. And it does, but she definitely will bring him back down to being Rashid. His achievements and who he is as a man and what he represents in terms of his character is directly related to uh, his mother. I was pretty strict. <laughs> She is a no-nonsense boss lady. She will give you a truth, and that truth don't go down easy all the time, but it's done with love. As a son, as a friend, as a mentee, as a principal, that's why we connect with her. I call her my bonus mom, my big sister. My mother, my young sister. <laughs> I call Dr. Hines mom. Dr. Hines had been a principal in uh, two different schools in the city of Chicago. She became an amazing mentor, helping to mentor younger principals, eventually served on the Board of Education, which may sound glamorous, but that's actually a thankless, very, very difficult volunteer unpaid job. I was blessed to actually sit on the Chicago Public School Board with Dr. Hines for two years. Seeing her impact on students, her touch, her coaching with teachers, her coaching with principals, her wisdom is frankly like watching Leonardo da Vinci paint the Sistine Chapel. She continues to mentor principals. She knows what it takes to get to that level as a woman, as a black woman, as a person who's had to overcome different obstacles. Just being a black woman, they need wisdom and she takes it upon herself. As a boss, Mahalia was the best. If I hadn't had her as a principal 
With her leadership skills, I would never have lasted in education. People would kill to teach for Dr. Hines. She was so passionate, so nurturing, but also uh, raised a high bar. She knew how to empower you. I didn't get the movement in like moving up in my career until I met Dr. Mahalia Hines. She always emphasized how important it was that we help these children that were underachieving and poverty stricken. She made them feel like they were special. Dr. Hines was a major influence on my decision to become an educator. What was so impressionable about Dr. Hines was her ability to connect. She never seemed too busy to listen. She never seemed too busy to engage in what we felt was important. She understood the urban child. If they came to school in the wintertime, uh, poorly dressed, she had a plan for buying clothes. She never let the outside things interfere with their growth and learning. She sees you deeply. She has this way of inspiring you to be your best self. Love was such an awesome part of who she was as an educator. She was at the forefront of character education before it was even being formalized. Common Ground Foundation came after she retired. It was just in her to still help children. I think it's one of those things where she'll never stop teaching. So now within the Common Ground Foundation, she's still educating young people. I think once an educator, you're always going to be an educator. So even in retirement, her work continues on and it will continue on, you know, until she leaves this earth. If you look at the people that are around her and love her and how they have grown, that's her legacy. She's a change maker. She's made a change in 380,000 kids' lives. Not many people can say they've touched that many lives. I believe my mother's legacy will be one of love, of inspiration, of hope, of education. I said a line in a song. They say we don't, we don't get, get to, to choose, choose our mothers. mothers. Somehow I know our souls chose each other. When I feel that way about my mom, it's like, yeah, our souls chose each other. For my mother to get the GSV Lifetime Achievement Award, for all the work she's done in our lives, all the souls that she has enhanced, we could celebrate her at this moment. I'm very, very happy for her. Take this in, Ma, because you deserve it. Love you. I will be there, I will be there. On behalf of Arizona State University and Global Silicon Valley, it is my incredible honor to award the Lifetime Achievement Award for 2020 to Dr. Mahalia Ann Hines. Few people in this country have done more to, to mentor students and educators and principal leaders throughout the country to make, to make the delivery of a world-class education available to all. She represents everything that, that we stand for in our mantra that all people will have equal access to the future. Congratulations, Dr. Hines. We could not be more thrilled. Good afternoon. I'm excited to be here at the ASU GSV virtual conference. This is a little different for me. I've been attending these conferences for over five years but I've never done it virtually, but I'm excited to be here today. First of all, I want to thank Michael and Deborah. Deborah is a very special friend of mine and she's very persuasive. When she first asked me about accepting this award, I immediately said no. But as I said before, she's very persuasive. When I look back at the video and saw what people were saying about me, all I can say to you is thank you, Deborah. In a way, I'm living right now in a life that I could not have dreamed of. I think that while people have often said to me that I have impacted their lives, they have really impacted mine. Being a teacher all of these years has been so rewarding and important to me. When I listen to what some of my former students say, and some of my current students or mentees say, it really honestly almost brings me to tears. I thank God that I've had the opportunity 
to have any kind of impact into people's lives. I just told my girlfriends today, my favorite song is, If I Could Help Someone. They made me feel that in a little way, I may have helped them. So I want to thank the Common Ground family. I want to thank my family, my brother, especially my husband, with who I could not do this without his support. My mother, who has supported me from the time that I was born, and she also let me know that I said I wanted to be a teacher at five years old. It is something I love. I thank God that he has given me the opportunity and blessed me with the skills to be able to do it. Again, I would like to thank you for this award. I'm not sure that I deserve it. I know that I did not achieve it by myself. So I thank all of the people who have had a part in it. Again, I would like to thank you for this award. And I regret that I can't celebrate in person with you, but I am going to celebrate nonetheless with my sister friends, Maddie Turner, Jessica Kane, and Gloria Hardiman. Again, I want to thank ASU, GSV, Michael and Deborah for this wonderful award and for all of the people who said such kind things about me. Congratulations. Congratulations.